if you want to play PlayStation 3 games on your Steam Deck with smooth performance, minimal stutter and stable Vulkan settings, this video is all you need. I'll show you step by step how to set up RPCS3 on your Steam Deck in 2025, install the official PS3 firmware legally and apply the best performance settings that remove stutter, improve loading times and boost FPS. This works both on Steam Deck LCD or the newer OLED. And I'll also show you how to add RPCS3 into gaming mode so you do not have to go into desktop mode so it launches like a normal Steam game. If this helps you drop a like and let's get straight into it so let's prep the steam deck first so we need to go into desktop mode it's really simple to do that you press your steam button you go to power and then you select switch to desktop you go to desktop okay now they're in desktop mode to navigate you can use the touch screen or if you wait a few seconds, this will become the mouse and you'll be able to just drag just on it like so. So I'll, I'll just tell you the control. So you can drag like that. That can take a few seconds to kick in. Next, the left shoulder button. So this one here is right click. And the right one here, or the trigger I should say, is, no, sorry. This is, yeah, this is right click. This is left click. It can be a bit confusing because it's opposite way around, left and right. But yeah, so left click and this is right click. Okay, so now that we've got that sort of kind, I'd say, housekeeping stuff out of the way, now let's go ahead and, you know, set things up. First of all, we need to create a new folder on the desktop. I've got a, so if I just go right here, right click, you want to go to create new folder and to open up the keyboard you just press x and the keyboard now will start you can you know tap on it or you can just use the arrows to navigate like so we're going to call this emulation i'm going to so so just a little bit of background i'm going to create a folder on the desktop it's going to be called emulation you can put all your emulators in there you can we're going to have a ps3 folder we're going to have some you know folders in there like games firmware saves etc you can also put it somewhere else you could put it on an sd card if you want to you could put it in documents but i'm going to put it here but it's good that you organize it in some capacity so it's going to say m u lation click enter okay so now that we've created that we can close this down i will move this over here we can just double click to open it up and in here we're going to create another folder so right click create new i'm going to call this ps3 ps3 click enter in here i'm going to create another folder right click create new and click uh, we're going to click x and we're going to call this games click enter and so there's a couple of optional folders you can create i'm not gonna create them but i'll let you know so what you could do you could create a folder called firmware and any of the firmware files that you use you could store them there if you want to keep hold of them for later you'll create a folder for saves as well so if you want to manually store saves somewhere or you can let steam deck handle it uh, i mean rpcs3 handle that and I, so that's what i recommend just let it handle it now let's actually install rpcs3 so we need to download it so if you want the best performance don't use the flat pack version use the app image official build and to do that you go click here you want to open up a web browser and if this is the first time you're going into desktop mode firefox might not be downloaded it'll open up the app store you can just click install in the top right and you'll be good to go Okay, so let's search for RPCS3. RPCS3, so it's the download link. So I will provide links in the description to everything anyway. So if we click download and scroll down, we want Linux. We want the x64 version. Let me see if I can show you. So what we want is the x64 version. You just click it. 
it will start downloading in the top right as you can see I'm going to cancel it because I've already got it downloaded cancel that next what you need to do is download the ps3 firmware so if you just select this I'm going to type in ps3 firmware so this is legally obtainable you don't have to rip it from a console and as a result because they provide the firmware on their website you can legally download it there's no issues the way you have with other systems such as nintendo so i can provide these links to you so you just go on the official website you yeah you scroll down to where it says update using the internet update using a computer click update using the computer and you can click this and you'll start downloading if you get this not a problem you click the arrow you click allow download i'm going to cancel it because i've already downloaded it cancel a little thing to note i found the playstation website over the years to be weird and buggy so sometimes when you click the download link it doesn't download to solve that you right click you go to save link as and then you can just save it and this will do the same thing as well so that's just a little tip depending on when you're accessing it and what system also as well if you're accessing it on a different system it might not download again just something to note we've got everything that we need in terms of games i can't show you where to get them but honestly if you google it they are not hard to find so the rpc is free let's just drag that over here just move it here you can rename it optionally by right clicking rename if you would like to i'm just going to leave it as is for now i'm happy with the way it is okay so what we need to do is open it up to do that you need to make it executable so right click go to properties go to permissions allow executing file as program on an older version it might be like is ex executable click ok now we can just double click it click execute ok so now that it's launched up let's install our ps3 firmware you go to file install firmware and for me it's on the deck and download no it's on the desktop actually ps3 update update.pop if it's not in that same exact naming convention, um, it won't pick it up. So just bear that in mind. So it needs to be exactly like that. So if you've actually downloaded two and you have like bracket one in it, it won't pick it up. So you just click it, select it. You'll go ahead and store the PS3 firmware. Honestly, it does not take long at all. Okay, so now that we've done that, and now in terms of installing games, it is really simple in the game folder i'm going to put this game so this is minecraft it is a .7z file so we need to extract it so now let's add our game so we got it right here minecraft and it's a .7z file you can right click extract extract here inside of there we'll have another folder and this is the folder that we want the one with the ps3 game file you might have an iso that's fine if you have an iso you can use those as well so you just copy and you just right click paste it here so now that the game is now installed we can actually select the game or you know open up our ps3 so we just double click this actually do i i've already got it open yeah okay so i can go to file add games and just go to deck desktop emulation ps3 games click choose it'll click ok so now that our game has appeared we're all good to go at this point if you have a package uh, for the game for some games you know the one that you would download after store for example you can click install packages and you can install it like so very very simple very very easy to do okay so now that we've done that let's just go over the setting most of the settings you'll leave as is you go to configuration cpu leave all this as it is not the way that i've got it which is default gpu and you will by default have it like so so you want to make sure the renderer is set to vulcan sometimes it's open gl so vulcan this will help improve performance graphics device that's fine 
Then you've all this as is. Default resolution, you always do 720, you don't change that. If you want to increase the resolution with the Steam Deck, you're really not going to be doing that because it's not the most powerful system. But this is what you would do. You could reduce it possibly. And what you want to do as an extra thing, just to help with the performance and micro stutters, enable right color buffers and asynchronous texture streaming right here. Everything else, like in audio, just make sure you have QB selected, not disable audio. I've both seen that before. Everything else you can leave, like an emulator, you can leave all of this as is. So, like if you want to pause emulation, you know, when it's lost focus, you can do that, you know, so, so it's not continually going. These are more just optional settings. You can start game in full screen mode as well if you want to. Again, these are just more optional settings. And once you've done that, you click save and pretty much it now the last thing that we want to do to configure it you want to go to pads and then set up the pad and to do this you don't want keyboard you don't want evdv you want sdl and it will pick up your controller you do steam deck and it will automatically map the controls if you want to override it you just click it let's say if you press right as you can see it's detected it and like so all the keys will work fine you can go around and do it you can add a configuration benefit of this you can have different controls for different games different genres different users for example and you can change it for different players as well if you want multiple players on your console so as you can see when i'm moving the analog sticks see if i can see it down here let me focus in when i'm moving i'm moving the analog sticks the values are changing here you can change the dead zone so if you know you have a dead zone you can change that right there that's it apart from that we can click switch uh, and that enables vibration as well and we're good we can save that uh, you know we fixed the micro stuttering by adding right color buffers asynch asynchronous texture streaming and st stutter reduces after a few minutes of gameplay as the cache builds as well so just bear that in mind uh, here's another little tip as well for audio crackling make sure in configurations gpu and uh, gpu audio you want to make sure the audio buffer is selected 100 milliseconds and if you have an issue you can do enable time stretching as well um, but that's it that in terms of settings there's no other settings that you'll be doing we've done the controllers we'll be adding the rpcs3 emulator to the gaming mode now but before that one last thing i want to show you is you can do custom settings per game so if you right click you go to create custom configuration from global settings and you can change the setting and this will just apply to this particular game the reason you want to do that is some games have specific settings that make it work better and to find out you launch up firefox your browser you go to search for rpcs3 compatibility list i'll provide a link in the description you just go on to here this has a great compatibility list say minecraft for example so you scroll down and you find minecraft wherever it is yeah, it might be easy if i just type for it so if i go up i'm gonna type it minecraft i definitely do minecraft -ger. Um, yeah okay so it's auto completed there and uh, you just need to figure out which one you have i have the 1976 version 1976 which is this one so just click the game so it was the disc version and here we go so this is the pretty much you know, so some notes about it uh, but the only you know sort of settings that they've given are up here so you want to do an isotropic filtering to auto which is automatically set frame limit off uh, due to without increasing game speed version below we will have g3 input above uh, so it, so really there's, there's not really any specific settings it's a low end game but some games they have a lot of changes and that helps improve performance so always check the compatibility list one last thing i'm going to show you now so if you right click your game you can do manage game patches you just click download latest patches and in here you can enable some different settings so for minecraft you can enable 90 field of view any item in our fan for example you just click it click the checkbox like so and then you just click 
save apply i um, don't want any of these so i'm just going to leave that as is um, but we're done we are actually done here we can close so you can launch the game up here you can click it click play we're not going to do that we're going to leave it as is and actually just one last thing there's always one last thing like steve jobs so right click it you can do custom images so you can add uh, you know images as well you can do check game compatibility which will take you to the website you can do download compatibility database and in here over here it'll give you the compatibility right there so it's saying it's playable which is fantastic but okay now we are ready to actually add it to steam so if you launch up steam this will just launch you up in desktop mode which is what we want you want to go to steam up here that's how games add a non-steam game to my library you want to click browse you want to go to desktop emulation ps3 select that file and now click add selected programs now in library this will show you all your games so if you just click this option here click installed locally you want to right click rps ps3 you want to go to manage not properties and you want to change the name because it's not the best looking name so it's going to right click it and go to r p c s free click enter there we go we're ready to go we can close this down close everything down now and now if we go back to return to gaming mode we can go click the steam button go to library and it is in the non-steam section so go non-steam go rp3 one no last tip make sure in your properties compatibility is not enabled in some of the old versions you had to enable it do not enable it that will give you the best performance click play it will launch up rp3 in terms of tweaking settings i do oh, we have got the I'm just going to turn this off. So you can, again, low tip, you can enable the performance overlay level and you can limit the frame rate as well if you would like to. Uh, so in terms of changing settings in RPS3, I actually prefer doing it in desktop mode, but then come in here to play it. So you select your game. You can't use this anymore. So you have to just use the touch screen, click play. And here we go. The game is now launching. You'll just compile the PPU modules. This can take a bit of time depending on your game. Minecraft is a small game, so this will not take very long at all. There you go. We have it working. I've already got a world created, so I'm going to click load. Just, just get in there, show you that we have PS3 emulation on the Steam Deck in 2025. So once it's all loaded, looking around, you see we got good performance. Uh, you know, there's so many other games you'll probably want to play. I know people play Skate and that had really good performance on Steam Deck, it was 60 frames per second to be honest. And that's it. So that's the full RPCS3 Steam Deck setup for 2025 legal firmware clean folder setup, best performance, Vulcan stability, stutter fixes, and gaming mode integration. If you want me to do best settings per game like God of War, The Last of Us, Uncharted, Demon Souls, or Persona 5, comment below and I'll make it. it. If this helped, hit like so more deck users can find it, subscribe for more Steam Deck optimization videos, and I'll see you in the next one.